Hello everybody, Ooh, do here here, and back to you with another USNCO video. This time we're covering the 2019 National Exam Problems 49 to 60. So let's begin. So which molecule has a dipole moment of zero? This one we just draw out the loose structure. So the loose structures are H or it could be Yeah. So this one so this one over here has a dipole moment of zero because the terminal atoms are symmetrical and then the dipole vector cancels out. This one, the dipole vector faces this direction, so you can cross out A. Uh, CH3 CH Cl3, the Lewis structure is oh, let me just write it over here. So let's see to do Again, the dipole vector faces in this direction, so we can easily cross out B. And then moving on to SO2. So if we draw the loose structures of SO2, we get and this molecular geometry is bent. That means the dipole moments are zero. So C is wrong. And if you draw SO3, finally, it's trigonal planar. There is equal vector strength on each side. That means there is no net dipole moment. And this is trigonal planar, trigonal planar geometry. So it is D. Pretty straightforward question. Moving on to 50. The carbon oxygen bond in carbon monoxide has a higher bond dissociation enthalpy than carbon oxygen bond CO2, which is the best explanation of resistance. This is an extremely easy question. So let's we'll see. Bond C has a bond order of three, while each carbon has a bond order of two. A higher bond order means more energy to break it. So, and which is the case here? Dot loose structure CO has a bond R3. Well, CO2 has a bond R2 for each bond. So, it looks good. Uh, so, B, CO is a polar molecule. Yeah, that, that, that barely makes a difference in bond strength. So, B's out. C contains a. No, no. Doesn't fit well. And then lone pair now. A is the answer. A, A makes the most sense out of these ones. Pretty straightforward question. Moving on. 51. This one's another easy question. If you draw out the loose structure, the, if you memorize her Vesper, Vesper uh, rules, this is linear. Linear, right? Uh, two bonding pairs and three lone pairs. So this gives you linear, and then the angle is 180, and that is A. Again, okay, 52 is a very easy question. Um, which species is strong as bronzer acid? It's D. The, um, the more oxygens there are, that means the stronger the acid is. And the reason why is this. See, if you had more oxygen, right, the central atom, or BR in this case, has a higher oxidation state. And because it has a higher oxidation state, it grabs the electrons from the OH bond more, right? It wants to get as much electrons or negativity it can to compensate for its high oxidation state. So this, in fact, uh, makes the OH bond more polar. And the H, this, the H, the hydrogen part of the bond more positive, so it becomes more acidic. So that's why more oxygens equals stronger acid, and it, the answer is D. So these are very four pretty straightforward questions. Fifty three is a little tricky. So, so if we, the start reason. So. Which, which is the best depiction of the three-dimensional arrangement of atoms in nitric acid? So, okay, 
So you can cross that D, it doesn't make any sense. Like nitric acid is a strong acid and must be bonded to an oxygen or uh, nitrogen. Th this geometry makes no sense and it's different from the other three. So you can cross out D. Now this is a little bit interesting. So which is the best okay, so let's do Lewis. So okay. So let me turn to the structure of HNO3. So it's gonna be uh, H Hold up, hold up, I guess. Okay. Yeah, I just kind of like <laughs> brain farted and forgot how you are loose structure, but here we go. So the the differentiator between these three options is this bond over here and its geometric uh, arrangement. So to keep in mind this oxygen atom is sp3 hybridized. And it's like it has a bent angle bent angle and it has a three dimensional space right sp3 has it's, it has a 3d shape whereas something like sp2 which is trigonal planar has one plane it's flat so we can cross out c because it is not flat it's sp3 hybridized and also a so b shows a 3d arrangement because it's sp3 so b is our answer so yes 54. This one is a very tricky question. Like, all right, 53, 54. So, okay, so which of these is not a correct statement about the ferroxylate ion? Okay, so. The oxalate part is bidentate, that means it has two bonding sites to the metal center. So let's draw out the structure. So, okay, so if I, so the structure is Fe, uh, so, okay, so. This is the oxalate, and then doo -doo, and then right. So essentially, this is the horizontal plane because like these two atoms are like equatorial, and then that means the oxide's equatorial. But this one is more of a vertical type. Same with this one. And whenever you see uh, three bidentate ligands together. It's chiral. Let me show you how. So if you draw another thing. Right. So this one is horizontal. This one is vertical. This one is vertical too. So in a way, like, if you, you can... You can get those uh, molecular toys sets and like experiment with them. From what I found out, these two are just child. Like whatever, you, they're not super imposable. Like whatever orientation you do, they won't fit into each other, right? So that's how it goes. So 54, it's correct. So you can cross it out. So it's wrong. There are two different carbon o carbon oxygen bond. Distances and ions due to resonance, right? Um, I think oxalate is resonance stabilized, and multiple resonance forms, and that means all the bond lengths are the same. It may look when you write down the little structures, it may look different, but in reality, that's not the case because it's like a blend. Resonance structures different, different resonance structure. The molecule, it's the in real life is a blend of the different resonance structures. So you can cross out B. So C. C. Um, there are two different iron oxygen bond distances. And I know they're all the same. This is the same. This is the same. This is the same. There's no reason for them to be different. So 54 C. And let's take a look at D. There are. 
there's no yeah so 54 is um let's take a look at d there are six iron oxygen bonds in the iron and iron how bad yeah so one two three four five six so this one's correct so c is the correct one because there's no reason for this the bonds the bond lengths to be different because all the ligands are the same ligand oxalate so that goes out so 55 So 55, what is the major organic product of the reaction of potassium cyanide with 2-bromopentane? Okay, so this is like a testing your knowledge on substitution reactions and elimination. Okay, so what are our, what are our, our um, reagents? So, so it's... CN, right? CN is negatively charged and it could be a nucleophile, right? So, since it's a nucleophile, it will do a substitution reaction. So, A, B, and C are wrong and it's a D. The thing is that CN is a weak base. CN is a weak base. So, it won't abstract a proton and create a double bond and which is a elimination reaction so D is the correct answer 56 yeah, this one it trips me over every time I do this I don't know why so how many distinct compounds of the formula C5H11Cl can be formed by free radical chlorination of 2-methyl butane so what is the structure of 2-methyl butane first it is you have a butane group and then the methyl substituent is on the second carbon so okay so let's begin so we have Cl2 and HV I shall not draw the answer choices but I'm too easy to erase them okay let's begin so yeah so basically the radical chlorination basically you can chlor add a chlorine group to you can replace a hydrogen atom with a chlorine group so yeah so let's begin so first one that comes to mind is over here so we can draw this cl and then so this is our first product and then yeah and then we can also put one over put one over here so then we can do this. And then and then what else? You can put one over here. Um uh, let me get any paper to do this. Do this one. So Alright, I got it down, so, and then we can also write, we can attach one over here, so it's, and one over here. Now, you you probably could think, oh yeah, I already got four, so, so one, two, three, four, but you, you have to remind yourself, check for chirality. So which ones of these are chiral or chiral? <laughs> so hmm. this one looks chiral. So we attach a seal, seal group here, a methyl group there, hydrogen, and then this group, isopropyl group. So this one is chiral, so we can plus plus an antimere. And now which one else? There's no five option, so this is a tricky one. And the key to realize is that the chiral center in this compound is over here methyl group, ethyl group, and this group over here, and plus a hydrogen. So there's plus an antimere, and this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It is 6, and the answer is C. Moving on. A compound with the formula C5HH80 has exactly one 
pi bond, how many rings does this compound have? So do you want to memorize this equation called the double bond equivalency? So you're going to, this is double bond equivalency equals to carbon plus 1 minus H over 2 minus X over 2 plus N over 2. So you just plug into this equation and the double bond equivalency tells you how many rings are in the compound or uh, a multiple bond, right? So if you have a double bond equivalency of two, you have a one ring and then you have one double bond. So, yeah. So let's begin. Let's plug into this equation. So, five, six, eight, and then there's nothing, no halogen, there are no nitrogens, and this will give you two. So this has one pi bond. So this has one pi bond, and then double bond, and then the other one must be a ring. So the answer is B, or 1. Moving on. 58. This one. Well, I think like 15 people got this correct, but it's a trick. So if you like have, like, if they give you some question, or you choose between like 4, like, for uh, bonds or something like that, you know what I mean? Like, always choose the one that's allylic, right? If you don't know what allylic means, it is something that's adjacent to a double bond. So let me show you what I mean by allylic. So, okay, so if I have like a double bond here, and then if I have a carbon here, this carbon is allylic. And then the significance of it is it that whatever lone pair or radical it is in there, it is resonance stabilized. And which means it can give to like, um, what do you call it? Since the lone pair or radical is resonance stabilized, it can impact molecular geometry or in this question, bond, association, enthalpy. So here's what I mean. So the answer, which one's allylic, guys? It is B. B is allylic. Answers. So, so on a bond dissociation enthalpy, right? So it's determined by like the state of the radical. So there's some radical stuff going on here. So, so if I draw the compound, right? So it's is it? Yeah. So there's a double bond here, and then in, when you're dissociating a bond, I guess there's a radical. Now this radical is resonance stabilized. This is the HCHB bond, but it trips the radical here now, and it's resonance stabilized. So, so I guess this uh, electron can go here, and one electrons of the double bond can go here, right? And one can go here. This gives you Resonance structure and this can resonate to the entire molecule. And because of this, a B, C, H, B has the smallest bond dissociation enthalpy. I remember um, from 2017, questions 53 or 54, I don't remember. It's, it's, it's a question that shows uh, allylic molecules, allylic lone pair impact on the molecular geometry so check that question out it's really helpful for you to tackle some trick questions 59 59 so what compounds are formed on hydrolysis of a typical fat with sodium hydroxide or saponification so so how does a fat look like? So of, uh, okay. So guess So what's saponification? At? So saponification is reverse esterification. So what is esterification? So it's a reaction between a carboxylic acid and an alcohol, which gives you an ester. So you lose water, and then you're gonna get an ester. So an ester is and sapophonication is using the ester, treating with a base, 
and then that will give you a carboxylic salt. So here's what I mean. So we're going to have this. If you're the base, you're going to get a carboxylic salt. and then an alcohol so using this knowledge oh and then you also need to know what a fat looks like so a fat is like with a group uh, wait not this so a fat structure is usually like this So it, it has fatty acids and a glycerol group. And this looks like an someone like an ester, right? And then there's some double bond I think there. Like something like here or something. So then you treat it a base. You treat it a base, right? Essentially you're gonna form with any AOH you're gonna form glycerol. plus um, carboxylic fats so it's going to be like so let's take a look at the answer so these are the products so let's take a look at the answer choices so hmm one equivalent of each an alcohol and a salt mm, of a monocarboxylic acid. No. Three equivalents of alcohols. No. And then one equivalent for trial. Yes. And three equivalents of the salt of monocarboxylic acids. Yes, yes. That is the answer. 59 is C. And 52, no. So no. Okay, 60. 60 is like, I don't know, like I vaguely, when I, when I first took this test, I vaguely remembered it being hmm, a signaling molecule for my AP bio notes. But like, I don't know how. I think you can compare it to like, you can cross out some energy, you can cross out some answers, like uh, prior DNA degradation or synthetic precursor to DNA from looking at some reference structure, but I don't know, that's kind of stumped on this question. But I just chose A, because I vaguely remember it's camp. So, I don't know. So, I think you can look at info from the structure and make your best guess. So, this is it folks. So, 60 questions done. <laughs>